Salam everyone and welcome to SomaliDispatch.com. Harun Jibril is a 17-year-old political science student at University of Victoria who declared his candidacy in the upcoming October municipal elections in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Despite his young age, Harun has been involved in local community work and also in politics. He is running for a municipal seat in Edmonton, South Ward 8. He talked to us about some of the local issues that Edmontonians are facing in his ward and in general, and his rise in politics. Um, salam Harun and, and, and welcome to SomaliDispatch.com. Uh, um, thank you for uh, accepting our invitation and, and allowing us to have this chat. Yeah, thank you so much for inviting me. Yeah, tell us a bit about um, your initial interest uh, as a young man uh, into mm -hmm. politics. What drew you in? I was called, I got involved, my dad got me involved with Kashina Gray's campaign for the NDP in Millwood. And I just really, I got really involved in local issues because I really think that, I feel like local government is the most important. It's the most direct way that citizens engage with their representatives. And I think that it's, it, it, anything that you can see with your eyes, except for schools, belong to, to, to the city of Edmonton. And I think it's just for me, ensuring, it just, generally just getting involved in politics is a way for me to talk about local issues, talk about homelessness, talk about youth, talk about the economy in general and how we, we really need a lot of change in Edmonton in our infrastructure planning and our transit. Right, yeah. right. Uh, how old were you when you initially got involved in politics? Uh, I was 15. Right. And it, it, like you said, it probably helps to have a family that's involved and immersed in, in community work, right? Um, yeah. So... Uh, you've described the campaigns of, of two different people that you uh, helped, one being a liberal and the other being an NDP. What was that experience like? Well, I was called, the Alberta elections are very close together, actually. Right. So I was involved with, uh, in, in the springtime, I worked on Christina Gray's campaign for a little bit. Then I moved on to Thomas Dang's campaign and I helped him get to the finish line. He right. was a, he was also somebody who ran for office at a young age. He right. ran for office in Edmonton South when he was 19. He was right. elected at 19 and he ran for re-election when he was 24. Right. I After that, I moved on to, I was a part of Amarjeet, so he's a youth, uh, youth committee. Right. And I got involved in his campaign very quickly after that. Mm -hmm. I helped out. I was called. I was a volunteer for a little bit. Then I got hired onto the campaign. I helped out with canvassing and just data entry. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah. And then after we lost, um, after we lost the Amherst election, I started looking into the city council run. And uh, I started looking into city council in February 2020. I was meeting with people and we were talking up until COVID happened, of course. Right. And then all my everything moved online. Right. So what motivated you to make that move or, or, or you know, how did you get to that? Like, um, what said to you, hey, man, that might be a good place to start? City Council was a good place for me. To, I, I really thought it was a good place for me to start because it, it has a very direct impact on the youth here in Edmonton. Our transit system needs a lot of work. Now, as our, and at City Council right now, we, the City Council, we don't have much money. And that's one of the reasons why a lot of City Council is not going to be coming back come next term. A lot of them have announced that they're not going to be coming, like Scott McKean. A lot of the old timers that have been there for a while, and that, that have been like a staple in City Council won't be coming back because they recognize that we don't have money. But at this point, I think now is the time that we invest in infrastructure. Now is the time we invest in projects of the high level line. Now is the time that we start bringing, we start doing revitalizations of neighborhoods. Like in older areas, we start looking at roads, like major intersections like White Ave, Jasper Ave. And now is the time that we start creating jobs by creating programs to repair these areas. And I think we, and even our track system, now is the time to start investing in the LRT system. Now is the time to start investing in the, in the transit system. And that's one of the reasons why I have my, one of my biggest plans is bringing free transit for youth under 21. It will help a lot. It will help drag more youth to Edmonton by making it more affordable for students to live here. It will bring new potential here. Right. It will help out a lot. And at the University of Alberta, especially, they charge about $600 a semester to park there. Imagine, and a lot of students, they have to pick up the transit. And, they, and transit's no better because you have to pay about $140 for every semester as well. So making it free will help a lot of students. 
Right. Uh, given uh, Edmonton's uh, a long history um, uh, of not having people of color, uh, specifically black people uh, uh, on their councils and not being elected, uh, it, what chances do you think you have in running? And uh, if you can go over uh, what some of the uh, challenges in that would be great. I think I think I have a very good chance here. With the discussion of Black Lives Matter here at Edmonton and with the discussion about uh, getting people of color involved and even getting women of color involved here in Edmonton, it's become a very prevalent discussion. And this election, we've already seen about three, in Edmonton downtown, there's another young black man who's running for office. His name's Adrian Bruff. We already have another female running here in Ward, uh, in the, in the deep south named Rihanna Hoyle. And we're seeing a lot of black people stepping up to the table and deciding to run because we do need representation. Edmonton's been a city for 116 years. We've been a town, we've been a town since 19, uh, 1894, yet we've never had a black city councilor. We've, we've lacked representation. Edmonton has about 40% uh, people of color, yet in the, in the, we've only had four people of color sit on council. And there needs to be change. See, when a, when a city, when a representative does not represent, does not physically represent their constituents, it's a problem because how can somebody advocate for issues if they don't even know what, if they don't even come back, come from the same shared background as somebody? We need a black, we need a strong black voice on council. We need a strong youth voice on council. And I plan to be both. That's, that's right. Um, representation uh, is, is, is definitely, uh, it has to be on that level. And if, if you can't relate to someone, um, you, can, you can represent them on broad issues, obviously, as a greater community, but specific concerns and challenges, someone has to have the same background as the people that they're representing. Um, I get it. So I know you, in municipal uh, politics, you don't need an endorsement or you don't need to belong to a party per se. Uh, as someone who worked on both, um, you know, two, I should say, not both, because there's more than two uh, political parties in Alberta. Uh, why do you think it's, um, why do you not seek or you don't think it's a good idea to have an endorsement? Uh, in my area, I'm, in my area, I'm especially, I am running on a platform basically of getting things done. I don't, I, I'm committed to working with any party. I'm committed to action on homelessness, action on ensuring systemic racism dies. I am, I'm committed to getting an active transportation system that works for everyone. I'm committed to investing in infrastructure. And I really think that it's gonna hinder my progress on council to be connected to any party. Me personally, I am a, I'm a left-leaning centrist. I, I, I believe that we need change in society, but we have to understand the cost to the taxpayer. And I, 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 don't, I, I don't really think that, I am just trying to get things done at city council. I don't, and I, it's gonna hinder progress, especially if the NDP don't come back to power. I'm here committed to working with the UCP in Alberta. I'm committed to working with anyone that will listen. And yeah. Yeah, um, absolutely. Um, so given what's going on around the world and in your city, um, you've already mentioned uh, Black Lives Matter and some of the challenges that indigenous people go through and that we need to, to address. Um, but given local politics and its limitations, uh, what can one do uh, when they see you running and, you know, yes, the homelessness problems and, and the parking and transportation, mm -hmm. those are huge local issues. But there seems to be, um, with what's going on with the pandemic and, and, and what have you, everything seems to have taken a back seat. How would you address some of the concerns that you've even mentioned? And how is it even... Uh, are possible to address those in, in a local politics, like municipal mm -hmm. politics? Yes, uh, homelessness is technically a provincial jurisdiction. However, since 20, uh, I believe since 2019, the provincial government under Jason Kenney has been evading their responsibility. They've refused to help municipalities like Edmonton and Calgary in their battle with homelessness. So Edmonton and uh, Calgary have actually stepped up and started providing funding for it. What I want to do at a city level to address homelessness is that I want to redirect 20% of new developments here in Edmonton to be affordable housing. So basically, if a developer wants to build a neighborhood or something, 20% of that neighborhood has to be dedicated to affordable housing. And having this mix of housing will help newer families and newcomers come to Edmonton and actually have a chance. 
Because what's happening is that we have these designers and developers coming together and building these neighborhoods that are unaffordable. They're building them in the middle, in the midst of absolutely nowhere, down in, in the deep, deep south and the deep, deep north. That's where they're building these houses. And what's ended up happening is that they're bringing a greater cost to the taxpayer. See, the further spread out we are, the more it costs for a city to bring out, to do basic services. The reason why Edmonton, Edmonton is one of the worst cities for urban sprawl, because we keep annexing land from Leduc. And we keep taking, every single time we take a bit from the Leduc, we are increasing tax to our taxpayers. Because now, the garbage truck has to go that much further. The transit system has to go that much further. We have to build infrastructure for that much er more area. And that's one of the reasons why city councils have struggled. The transit plan, the city of Edmonton just entered a regional transit system. That is going to, I am committed to getting free transit on board. The city of Edmonton has a budget of $3.21 billion. I'm committed to redirecting $14 million dedicated towards my transit initiative. Uh, Investing in infrastructure, the high level line, it requires about half a million dollars to begin uh, the, the conception and design process. I'm committed to, getting that, to, getting, to giving them that money. I'm also committed to working, and just this past week, we saw two attacks on the exact same day of uh, two, uh, two young Muslim girls at the university area, and especially in, in my ward, Ward Papasteo. We saw one at the, on White Ave, and we saw one at the, at the South Campus. And we need to address systemic racism in, in Edmonton. I know for years, politicians have said, that's not our city. That's not our problem. It is our problem, because we have to address it. This, Edmonton has to be a safe place for everyone. I'm committed to strengthening the anti-racism committee. I'm committed to bringing in to working with Edmonton police to ensure that we're not carting black people and we're not carting people of color on the street just for them for them walking around. I'm committed to bringing in body cameras for all officers in Edmonton. I'm committed to anti-racism uh, anti and I'm committed to bringing de-escalation training for every single Edmonton officer. And de-escalation training will also, and anti-racism Anti-racism training will also be provided to all city staff in Edmonton. I'm committed to those two things. I'm also committed to working to ensure that we're not raising our taxes astronomically. These ideas are going to cost money. I understand that. But the city of Edmonton has $3.21 billion. We spend $500 million on police. We spend, 400, we spend about $250 million on waste management services. Because that's how much it costs to service a city that is this much, that is this far spread out. So these ideas aren't radical. These ideas aren't new. We know these are issues. Investing in infrastructure, our tra my transit plan, the economy, the homelessness, these are very important issues. I'm here to amplify them and get them into the discussion. I'm also here for youth engagement, getting more youth to the table. I want to see more youth involved in the City of Edmonton public engagement sessions. I was uh, called in all of my years at high school, I was never once approached for a public engagement. I can't tell you anyone else in my high school that was approached for one. We need to get more used to the discussion because we are the ones that have the largest stake in Edmonton's future. We are the ones that are going to be here for the next, I don't know, 40, 50 years. And this is, this is where most of us are going to raise our kids. And the problem is, is that now we have politicians on city council, we have politicians in the province that are chasing our youth out of Alberta and they're running to BC or they're running to Ontario. And we need to keep Alberta talent in Alberta. Right. Um, finally, uh, as you know, uh, in, in the uh, Black and Indigenous communities, specifically Somali community, there's a scores of young men who are experiencing uh, considerable challenges, including unemployment, incarceration, and in some cases, death. And now with the pandemic and, and, the, and what's going on around the world, uh, the incidents that you described, uh, the hate uh, attacks and all of that uh, is kind of uh, getting traction in Alberta as well. Um, as a role model, if you, if you win, obviously you're gonna be you know, someone that people look to, especially youth look to. Uh, what could they expect uh, from you? I am, I'm, one of the things I'm going to do, and I'm going to encourage, I'm going to encourage local developers, when I'm signing contracts for infrastructure deals here in Edmonton, I'm going to encourage 20% 
to be minority youth. I'm going to encourage another 30% to be youth, and, uh, youth from 18 to 23. Getting more youth into jobs is incredibly important to me. And one of the ways, and similar to Theodore Roosevelt's idea of a new deal, uh, no, sorry, Franklin D. Roosevelt, his idea of the new deal, I really want to get a new deal brought into Alberta and have something where basically the government's employing Albertans to start getting jobs, to start working on infrastructure projects here in Edmonton. I think one of the best ways to keep youth out of jail is to get them doing something. I also want to, my transit plan will also help a lot of youth get to, to and from school and other activities. I also want to bring in down the road, I want to bring in a recreation plan where it'd be, we would have free recreation centers for anyone under 18 in Edmonton. And we can, we, I really want to combat, Edmonton, we have a very high youth crime rate. I plan to combat that by bringing in sports, by bringing in youth activities for them, some, for, for them to do something else. Encourage local people here at Edmonton to hire local youth. Get them to the discussion table, really. I appreciate it. Uh, those are uh, solid uh, ideas and much needed uh, ideas. And, and to have you push those ideas, uh, at least in local politics, is, is great to see. Um, I can guarantee you uh, a lot of youth are looking to you. Um, and uh, hopefully uh, the better you do, the more that would encourage them. I appreciate you, your time for this morning and uh, until we speak next time, uh, take uh, good care. Yeah, thank you much.